today's video, we're going to review four different 18650 lithium-ion batteries. We have the two highest capacity lithium-ions right now, the LG 3500 mAh and the one that's right behind it, the Panasonic 3400 mAh. And then we've got a cheap ultra fire that claims 6000 mAh. And then we've got the standard Panasonic 2200 mAh battery, which is the standard in lithium batteries used in laptops and other such devices. We're going to have six different tests. The winner of each test will get first place, then there's going to be second place, third place, and fourth place. First place will win three points, second place will win two points, third place will win one point, and fourth place will win zero points. So in the end, the battery with the most points is going to win the challenge. The dimensions of the 18650s are all pretty much the same. Some are going to be longer than others because they have a little button top or a protection circuit but basically they're going to be 65 millimeters long, 18 millimeters wide. You've got your button tops, flat tops with tabs welded on them. You can bend them over and make a button top. And you've got your standard flat tops and you can always solder on a little blob on the flat top to make your own button top. Button tops and flat tops don't always fit into the different devices. So make sure you get the right battery that fits into your device. Unprotected and protected cells also don't fit into different devices. So you got to make sure that one's compatible too. Now we're going to hook it up to the computerized charger. It's going to log all the data for us. And we've tested the current and the voltage with a fluke meter just to make sure all the test results are within 5 milliamp hours of accuracy. So we're going to do a whole bunch of discharge tests. To find capacity, we're going to discharge at 0.2 amp. We're going to do it a couple times for each battery just so we make sure we get accurate results. So what we're going to take a look at is capacity, energy in watt hours, nominal voltage, average between the capacity that they rated at, internal resistance, the temperature rise when it's discharging. We're going to run it through two real life tests, one using a USB charger and one running a high powered flashlight. Here's the scoreboard where all the batteries will be placed. Let's take a look at the first test, capacity. I'll put all the graphs up so you can pause it and then take a look at the graph closely and take your time looking at it. So as you can see on this bar graph, the LG 3500 milliamp hour sits at the top with 3435 milliamp hours. Panasonic is closely behind it and then the standard 2.2 amp hour cells way behind it and the ultra fire is getting 1000 instead of 6000. So that's a pretty bold claim that they completely did not meet. I guess they didn't think anyone would actually test it. Here's some voltage graphs. I'm going to put these up so you can pause it and take a look. But what's important to note is that the voltage stays constant even at high current draws. That's what you want to see out of a good battery if you're running high power flashlights or e-cigarettes or any devices like that. The LG 3500 has almost no uh, drop in capacity between your 5 amp draw and the 0.2 amp draw and that's attributed to its low internal resistance. All the other batteries have higher internal resistance so the LG is going to come out on top in almost all these tests. The Panasonic provides pretty good capacity at 0.2 amps but then once you increase the current draw it starts to drop but not too much because its internal resistance is a little higher than the LG but it's not that much higher. The standard Panasonic 2.2 amp hour cell does not do very well under high current draw but that's because it's a standard cell it's not made for high current devices. So if you're going to use a high power flashlight or a high power device make sure you don't use the Panasonic 2.2 amp hour. Make sure you get the higher capacity cell, which will provide higher ampacities and power output as well. And then here's the Ultrafire 6000 milliamp hour battery. It can't perform very well above currents of 1 amp. So anything that needs 2 amps or more, make sure you don't use the cheap Ultrafire batteries. You've got to get the LG or the Panasonic based on these test results. And it's probably dangerous to use this at 4 amps because the voltage drops insanely and the temperature starts to rise pretty quickly. Luckily it doesn't have enough capacity to heat itself up to the point where it does explode at 4 amps. So the LG 3500 gets the highest capacity rating, so it gets first place. Panasonic 3400 is right behind it, and third place is the 2.2, and the Ultrafire is 6000 milliamp hour, although they promise a lot, they fail and get fourth place and don't even register on the point board. Next up, we're looking at the amount of energy that the battery can provide. So if it keeps a high voltage and keeps a high current output, then it's going to get more energy. So first place in energy goes to the LG 3500 because of its 8.49 watt hours and the Panasonic 3400 is right behind that. It's not far behind at all. Now nominal voltage is a very interesting one. You average the voltage for the entire rated capacity of the cell. So the 3500 milliamp hour battery actually comes out lower than the Panasonic 2.2 because it delivers a lot of its capacity at the lower end. So that brings its nominal voltage down and the 2.2 amp hour cell actually maintains a higher nominal voltage. So if you look at this graph, the 
2.2 amp hour cell, the light blue, actually stays at a pretty good voltage and then drops off quickly. So its average doesn't get averaged out by a lower voltage, but the 3.4 amp hour and the 3.5 amp hour cells actually deliver a lot of that extra capacity at a lower voltage. So its nominal voltage is going to be lower than that 2.2 amp hour cell because of that. So keep in mind that a higher nominal voltage doesn't really mean you're going to provide more total energy. So the LG3500 should really come out on top on this one, but I'm going to play it by the rules and the highest value wins. So the Panasonic 2.2 amp hour is going to win on this one. I'm putting up all the graphs so you can see that the LG3500 has the highest voltage throughout its entire curve and compared to the rest it still stays above it. So for nominal voltage, Panasonic 2.2 amp hour takes the lead, LG3500 is just behind that, Panasonic 3400 is behind that, and then the UltraFire is way behind all of them. It can't hold its voltage at all. Next challenge is the internal resistance. It's a resistor in series with your battery basically. So if you have a high resistance, then it won't be able to deliver its energy very well. The lowest reading I got was for the LG3500 and that was 53 milliohms. Panasonic is higher, but it's a pretty good low resistance, 66 milliohms. The Panasonic 2.2 amp hour cell is two and a half years old, so it's sitting at 121 milliohms, and the UltraFire 6000 milliamp hour battery is at 123 milliohms. The next challenge is the temperature. So for a battery to discharge its energy and be efficient at it, it's got to have a low internal resistance. That's why in this graph you'll see that the UltraFire and the 2.2 amp hour increase in temperature quite a bit. That's the internal resistance discharging energy into the battery itself. So the lower the internal resistance, the less energy is going to be dissipated inside the battery. That's why you see the LG3500 increase in temperature a lot slower than the rest. And the winner of this one is going to be the one with the lowest rate of rise, and that's going to be the LG3500. So the LG3500 gets first place, Panasonic 3400 gets second place, third place goes to the Panasonic 2.2 amp hour, and last place goes to the UltraFire once again. The next test is a real life test. I'm going to put the batteries into a SoShine E4S USB charger, plug it into a DVR for a load. It pulls 0.74 amps. By plugging it into an energy meter, I can measure how many watt hours it delivers. And this energy meter says the LG3500 delivers 10.8 watt hours, whereas the Panasonic delivers 10.1 watt hours, which is pretty good. It's going to cost you a little less for the 3400 and it's probably still worth the money. So the LG3500 takes first place at 10.8 watt hours. The Panasonic falls shortly behind it at 10.1 watt hours. The Panasonic at 6.5 and the UltraFire at 3.2. So if you want the most energy for your USB devices, definitely get the LG3500. But if you want to save a couple bucks and still have almost as much energy, then go with the Panasonic. Next real life test is going to be a flashlight test. We're going to put the batteries into an 85 watt, 10,000 plus lumen flashlight. It uses 7 XML2 LEDs, so it's very high powered. And it's going to tax these batteries and try to draw more than 5 or 6 amps out of each of them. So this test shows you again that the internal resistance makes a big difference. The lower the internal resistance, the more power that it can deliver and the brighter the flashlight can get. So if you want the most powerful light, use the LG 3500s because it gives you 413 lux. Panasonic falls shortly behind it at 397 lux. The Panasonic 2200 isn't doing so bad, but it's three quarters of the amount of light that the LG gives you, so it's at 333. And the UltraFire actually doesn't do so badly here because You've got four of them in there and it gives you 295, but it's only going to provide you with 10 minutes of light instead of like an hour. So if you're buying batteries that actually need to do some work and actually need to be reliable, then definitely get the Panasonic or LGs. So the LG3500 gets 413 lux, Panasonic is shortly behind it at 397 lux, and the Panasonic 2.2 and the UltraFire is set at the bottom at around 300 lux. But keep in mind that although the UltraFire works and it gives you three quarters of the amount of light, you're only going to have that for 10 minutes before it dies. That's the problem with the UltraFires. They work at the beginning, but they actually don't work when you need them to work. So let's take a look at the results. First place is the LG3500 with 20 points. No big surprise there. Panasonic 3400 at second place with 13 points. Panasonic 2.2 amp hour with 9 points at third place. And the UltraFire didn't even register on the scoreboard. Which is unfortunate because if it had 6 amp hours that would have been great, but unfortunately it did not live up to its claims. So I hope you enjoyed all those test results and all that testing. Credits go out to LG, the MJ1 3500, 
Panasonic 3.4 amp hour, 2.2 amp hour, and the Ultrafire 6 amp hour. So if I have some advice for you, it would be to buy from reputable dealers like Gearbest or FastTech or good sellers on eBay who guarantee the capacity. Don't buy yourselves from people who claim it has 9,000 milliamp hours because for $2 you're not going to get that. All you're going to get is a cell that's been recycled or something that's inappropriate and may be dangerous to use. Thanks for watching that video and I hope you enjoyed. If you want to stay for some explanations of how I did the testing and little things like that, please go ahead. So now we're testing for the maximum capacity and we're measuring the terminal voltages of the battery at the same time and this will measure the minimum voltage that it saw. When we're done it should say 2.5. We've got it hooked up to this number 4 cable and to a Turnigy charger discharger. We're clamping it using rubber so that we get the maximum contact and we're using very thick gauge cable to minimize the voltage drop of the test equipment. Charger is plugged in with a USB cable and we're using log view to log the data. We're testing the LG 3500 milliamp hour battery at 0.5 amps discharge. To calculate the internal resistance, we're going to measure three different things. The open voltage, the resistance of the resistor, and then the voltage of the resistor when it's across the terminals. So we got 4.15. And we've got 2.7 ohms for the resistor. Now we're going to measure the voltage when it's across the battery, which is 3.98. Now we just solve for the current. Solve for the system resistance. Subtract the resistor from the system resistance. And then we've got the internal resistance of the battery itself, which is 0.062, 62 milliohms. The milli just moves the decimal place over three times. And milliohms is the standard internal resistance unit of measurement. The SoShine E4S. I'm going to use the 3500 milliamp hour LG batteries. I'm going to run it through this power meter, and the load is a DVR. So we'll see how much this USB charger can give us, and then determine how well it works. So now we've got the car DVR on and recording and it's pulling 0.74 amps. This says it's pulling 0.85 amps. And the power meter says something similar. So once this is complete, this will tell us how many watt hours the USB charger gave us and how many amp hours as well. So when converting it from 3.75 to 5 volts, it's gonna have quite a bit of losses, but we'll see how efficient this thing is. We're going to test the 3500 LGs against the 2.2 amp hour Panasonics. Those are good for 4 amps, these are good for 10 amps continuous. This is a little chambered box that allows the light to hit this lens undiffused, so it doesn't matter what the distribution is. Let's see how much we get. So with the LGs we get 596. Panasonics, we got 520. So there's a little bit of an increase with these LGs, but not a lot. But if you're looking for any increase, then that's definitely the way to go. So the exposure's locked. Let's see how bright the Panasonics look. Switch to the uh, LG 
Let's see if it looks about the same. So I'll hold it about the same distance. Yeah, it looks about the same. Not much difference to the camera. So if you're looking for that extra 10%, definitely upgrade to better batteries. Otherwise, quality Panasonics will work for you. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Learned something about batteries. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you and answer any questions you've got. So in conclusion, the LG 3500 is the best bang for the buck. Definitely purchase that one. I wouldn't recommend any other battery. And I'd highly recommend against the ultra fires just based on these test results. So it's not all about claiming you've got 6,000 milliamp hours or 9,000 milliamp hours. It's about the voltage, the current, and the capacity that the battery can actually deliver. And I think this video puts to rest the question of whether these ultra fires are good or if the LG 3500 is the king of all batteries. It's got the most capacity you can get out of any 18650 right now. And to any manufacturers out there, if you think your battery can stand up to these tests, definitely send some in and we can review them and post the results. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps.